Today I'd like to take us to Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 15 for our devotional. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. You will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Well, this last year during the pandemic has truly been one for all of us, I'm sure, that has caused us to run the gamut of emotions. With lockdowns and loneliness, isolation, the fear of getting sick, loss of income, cabin fever, our children on our nerves while they're at home, a host of other uh, things along the way. But there is one emotion of state of being. We need to recognize and look to the Lord for its destruction. And that emotion is fear. And, may, and we may want to run to a passage such as 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, because it's familiar to us. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And here the Greek word for fear is properly translated cowardice or timidness. And we see that, of course, if you read such translations such as the New American Standard, where it's translated that way. And yes, timidity and cowardice are birthed from fear, the fear of man. And this is a fear that comes from the flesh. And the new man, birthed by the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit at conversion, has a new spirit of confidence in God and is not controlled by the fear of men or circumstances. But 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 is not talking about the raw emotion of fear, but rather a timidity in sharing the gospel. And in our text today out of the book of Romans, we see Paul speak to fear as that which absolutely enslaves us. It wants to control us. It wants us to lose our confidence and faith in Christ. And it wants us to look elsewhere motivated by fear. It springs from our flesh and will, if given half a chance, enslave and turn us to a false hope. And that's what verse 15 of Romans 8 was speaking to. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You see, as believers, who have put on the new man, we are no longer in bondage to fear. And when we allow the flesh to rule, it is only then we can be enslaved by fear. And that's what verses 12 through 14 are speaking about when it talks about the flesh. And this is the tool, of course, that Satan uses to trap you and I with fear. It uses our flesh. And this, is, this fear is insidious. And it likes to mask itself. It uses, you see, our sinful flesh to hide its true nature and destructiveness. And frankly, it is, as our text suggests, born out of our flesh. And it is used by Satan and unscrupulous men to trap and influence us. And there are those who will use fear to seek influence over you from all quarters of life, especially some church pulpits and ministries. They'll use such things as conspiracy theories, fake or unfounded science, prophetic words from God, or so-called prophetic words from God. 
and a number of other things as well. And they will appeal to and feed our flesh and not the new man. I'd like to give you some verses to contemplate that will bring balance to our lives and help us to discern when there are those who want to profit from our fear. Psalm 94 verse 19 says, In the multitude of my anxieties within me, did you get that? So in the multitude of my anxieties within me, in other words, in my flesh, your comfort delights my soul. And so the psalmist says, I run to the Lord. I look for him for comfort. I look to, to him so that I might have delight in my soul and comfort in my heart. Or Psalm 46, verse 2. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Wow, there's a good one. He says, we will not fear, even though the circumstances may not change. The earth might be removed and the mountains might be carried into the midst of the sea, but we will not fear. That's what the new man does. He doesn't fear in the circumstances. He trusts in his God no matter what the circumstances and sees purpose in what God is doing. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Man, that's a convicting verse. Especially that last part, he who fears has not been made perfect in love. That's what love does. It perfects us. And it destroys fear because now we are so in love with our God that we see the circumstances of life, no matter what they may be, as being used in our life for him and for his glory and to conform us to his son. And, you know, in a world that is decaying because of sin and its consequences that are ever around us, let's you and I be comforted, really, no matter what the circumstances. I like what Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, we believe in a God of hope who will fill us with joy and peace and that we look to the power of the Holy Spirit that we might experience that hope, that joy, and that peace. Psalm 61 verse 2 says, From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Here the psalmist recognizes that there are things and there is a person that is much higher than himself or the circumstances he might find himself. And so he says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And of course, then there's that passage in Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven, which is very familiar. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. That's what God desires to do. We bring our anxieties to him. We petition him. And we look to him to bring about a peace that guards our hearts 
and minds through Christ. And I like what Jesus says, of course, in John chapter 14 and verse 27. And I'd like to just leave you with this verse. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And he said that in the midst of a dangerous fallen world.